Hey, what's going on guys? So we'll be taking a look at the Zelotes C12 custom gaming mouse. I actually did a review for this uh, last week sometime, I believe, and either tomorrow or later today I'll be doing a giveaway of this product. I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to get this video uploaded, but hopefully before Sunday night, and Sunday night is when the giveaway starts. I do have two of these mice, so one of them will be given away, and so yeah, if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and check that video out Sunday night, and then you will have a chance at winning this product. But anyway, this is a Zelotes C12 custom gaming mouse. I'll just get the box out of the way here. I already did an unboxing on this product, as I've mentioned, so if you're interested in seeing that, you can go ahead and check that out. The mouse itself here features 10 buttons if you don't count the DPI switch. However, counting the DPI switch, it does have 12, which I'm guessing is why it's called the C12 custom game mask. So we have six buttons on the side here, if you can see these. They do count from 4 to 9, which is a little weird, as I mentioned in the uh, unboxing here. So we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we do have our fire button here, which is originally mapped just double clicking the left click button. So you push this button, it's kind of like a rapid fire button, which is cool. Then of course we have our regular left click, our right click. You can click the scroll wheel, and then we have our two DPI buttons, which you may or may not decide to count. The mouse itself here looks pretty good in my opinion for a budget gaming mouse. It features a sort of matte black finish except for right here, which is glossy black, but fortunately does not really attract fingerprints. It does a little bit, but it's not bad at all. Um, and it also has some LEDs in here. There are LEDs, I think, here in the scroll wheel and in the back. Um, as well as on the right side here. So it does have a lot of LEDs, but we'll get into the software where you can actually customize the LEDs and I'll show you some of the problems I was having with it. But you can customize the function of each button except for the DPI switch, which is very nice and every single button is very tactile and clicky. On a lot of cheaper gaming mice, the buttons are kind of mushy and don't feel very good, especially these side buttons, which I'll get into in a second. But for all these buttons, they all click well and they sound very well and the scroll wheel is very, very clicky and good. Scroll wheel, however, does feel very soft and mushy, which I don't really like. Clicking it is fine, but actual scrolling is not very good. It's not a very good feeling scroll wheel in my opinion, but that's one of the only downsides of this mouse, except for some of the LED lighting customizations, which of course I'll get into in the software. But we do have some very nice buttons on the side here. On a lot of sort of MMO gaming mice, they have like 14 buttons down here or something ridiculous like that. This one only has six, but I would still kind of consider it an MMO gaming mouse just because of the buttons on the side here and how there are six of them. However, all of the buttons on the side here are very, very nice and easy to click. I found that on a lot of MMO gaming mice, the buttons on the side are kind of hard to push and hard to differentiate between. However, that is not a problem on this mouse. Each of the buttons all feel pretty similar, but just because of how there are only six of them and the kind of layout of them, they're all pretty easy to actually find and push, which is very, very useful in games and such. Because if you have 14 buttons on here, but you can't actually know which button you're pushing, it's kind of a problem. So the six button layout in the little ring here is very, very nice, and each button is very clicky and gives good feedback when it's pushed. Originally, the buttons are mapped to just the numbers that are on here. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But you can, of course, customize the functions of each button here. On the bottom of the mouse here, we do have the actual sensor as well as some weight tuning cartridges, which I'll show you in a second. We also have little rubber feet here to help with gliding. In the box, they actually include replacement rubber feet so that when these kind of wear down, you can just replace them pretty easily. Even though it's not that expensive of a mouse, so it's nice that they include replacement rubber feet here. We have two up here, and then one on the side here, and one back here. So gliding and everything like that is very good with this mouse, and like I said, if they start to wear down, you can just replace them with the ones that are included in the box. As for the weight tuning cartridges here, we simply open this by twisting it a little bit, and it just kind of falls out into our hand, which is very, very nice. I have taken some of the weight tuning cartridges out, as you can see. The mouse came with all the weight tuning cartridges in it, so it was very, very heavy, but you can, of course, um, add the two weights back in. It would be nice to see some sort of carrying case for the weights, but if you saw in my unboxing, there's no carrying case or anything like that, so I just kind of have these weights loosely in the box, which is a little unfortunate. It's a very good way to get them lost, but uh, Zulotis didn't provide a carrying case or anything like that, so unless you're planning on keeping the box, you won't really have a good place to uh, store these weights, which is a little annoying, but not a huge deal. So as you can see, you can use anywhere between zero and eight of the weights. So I'm just using six of them here, and the weight tuning cartridge is very, very easy to pull out of the mouse, which is very nice, because I found that in a lot of mice, it's kind of hard to pull out the weight tuning cartridges, but that is not the case with this mouse. One thing I forgot to mention is the uh, little thumb rest on the side here. We do have very good places for all of our fingers, except the pinkies a little, and there's they just kind of rest on this hump here, which isn't that great, but we do have pretty good places for all of our fingers here. As you can see, the little thumb rest that I mentioned, your thumb just kind of rests on here, and everything is pretty good, except the pinky. I wish they had like a little groove here or something like that, rather than the pinky just supposed to rest off to the side, which is not the most comfortable, but everything else is pretty good. I do like that they have a rest for this finger here, which is nice. So still a pretty good comfortable mouse to use, and like I said, because of the thumb rest here, you're not really having to strain your finger too much or anything like that to activate these buttons. You can almost kind of use like this part of your thumb to activate these buttons, which is very nice. So if you're using the mouse or something like that, you can kind of push on it like this or push on it like this and it's not super hard or strenuous to actually um, activate these buttons, which is very nice. So 
So the hardware of the mouse is very, very nice, but we'll go ahead and get into the software, which is where I had a few problems. That's what, kind of what I mentioned in the unboxing, is they have all these decent mice, and then the software is just really, really bad. And that is, I wouldn't say it's really, really bad for this mouse, but it's just not very good, which is kind of what I expected. I want to say for almost everything except like Logitech mice, the uh, customization software is really not very good, and that is the same with this mouse here. Um, the, you can't even download the software online, which is my first problem with it. You have to use the included mini disc, which is very annoying, and I looked and looked and looked and could not find any website for this mouse or anything like that, and it's sold by a bunch of different retailers on Amazon, which is part of the problem here, and so you do have to use the included disc, so you will have an optical drive, you'll have to do something with that, and you can't put it in a laptop that has an internal disc drive, you'll have to have one that actually has a tray that like slides out, because mini discs don't work in anything but those. So you may struggle to actually even get the software on your computer, let alone actually use it. Alright, so upon putting the disc in your optical drive, this is what we are presented with. We have a little window here that says the only thing on the disc here is the actual application itself, no manual or anything like that. And like I said, running it off of a disc is very, very slow and tedious and it's just really, really annoying. I mean, obviously you install it from the disc, but it takes like five minutes just because of the speed of the disc and it's just really annoying and I wish the manuals were available online. But that's just me. Once you have it all installed and everything like that, um, it's available in here. And then you go ahead and click on it. Here we go. We have the actual software here. You can see it's pretty tacky and cheesy in my opinion. There's like fire and and stuff everywhere but um, I guess it actually does kind of work so you can um, select the DPS settings here which is nice um, if you want to have the fourth DPI setting like way lower or something like that you can do that which is actually something I don't see all that frequently on gaming mice a lot of the times you can't actually change um, what each DPI setting is but it does range from 250 to 4000 so you can see I have um, one two three and four and if you simply want to turn off the other modes you can of course do that by like clicking on this and so the only DPI will be 1000 so you won't actually change it or something like that or you can customize which one you want it to be I mean if you really want to you can just make each one the same speed and so then even if you do change it's not a big deal or you can just turn them off and whatnot yeah so this is mode A here um, it doesn't say like profile or anything like that but that's what these are I believe so mode A is these and mode B is just a different profile I did mention that the uh, fire button was a double click but it's actually a triple click as it says and you can of course go ahead and customize each key so let's say we want number key 6 to be set to uh, backwards or something like that and number 7 we'll set it to a single key we can do that and let's push a key here it'll set it to H and so that uh, 7 key will be mapped to H so you can customize everything here you can actually customize 10 and 11 I did not know that so you can actually customize the DPI which is which is very very nice so if you don't actually use DPI I don't really use DPI so if you don't really use DPI you can change the DPI switches to actually be something else which is very nice so we can change it to left click if we really want to so when you push uh, this button here the plus button for the DPI will actually simulate left clicking which is nice so if we go ahead and go on mode B everything's back to default and then we can press default here to default everything and yeah so you can change the function of each button and they also have like macro keys and combo keys and things like that if you want to do all that which is very very nice you can also just turn the key off if you want to it's totally up to you so the software really isn't terrible but it's just not as good as I'd like it to be and installing it off of a disk and everything that's just kind of annoying but it does actually work pretty well if they have the report rate setting here so you can change between 125 and 1000 here and then the um, RGB effects is where I really had a problem here so let's go um, we don't want it to loop so we'll just set it to one color here all right all right we'll have white on and then we'll press apply and theoretically the um, mouse should change colors here and so as you can see it's on white now theoretically and so this is like off for some reason. So like this part doesn't support white or something like that. This part up here is blue and this part is yellow. So that's my problem here. I'm not really sure why it does that because theoretically it should be on white here. So if we put it on neon mode and then press apply to see if it changes anything. Um, that just made this more like red. So I really don't understand the uh, RGB effects at all. If we press like yellow and turn off white, see what that does. Um, it didn't actually appear to change anything which is weird. Let's turn it off. Let's put it on standard mode. Maybe that's our problem. Okay, so standard mode here, where you can see that um, the sides here is more green than yellow, but it's theoretically green. The back is yellow, and yeah, I don't think you can customize each part of the mouse differently or anything like that. You can just customize the LEDs as a whole, which is, again, kind of the problem with the uh, software here for the LEDs. So if we go ahead and do purple here, press apply, you can see the side piece up here turns purple. This turns like pinkish, and this turns red, and then the uh, DPI switch here is always blue, which is kind of weird and annoying. You can't change the color of the DPI switch, and up here I guess the scroll wheel is technically on as well, but you can't really see the uh, colors because it's like a lot lighter than the rest of the mouse. So everything but the LEDs is pretty good I would say, but if you are wanting to customize the LEDs like you should be able to, you will kind of have a hard time. I think blue was the thing that looked the best in my opinion, so if you put it on blue, um, 
because blue just turns this half of the mouse off. So these up here are blue. Uh, these are kind of almost blue. I think the, this blue up here is actually just from this LED, but as you can see, it kind of matches up here, but the bottom half of the mouse is just like off because it doesn't support the blue LED or something like that. Which is something that sound was very, very strange and I'm not really sure why that is. However, I just put it onto green here and it actually looks like green is pretty much the whole mouse here. So I guess the green LED works pretty well. So sides here and everything like that is all actually green, which is nice, except for the blue DPI indicator on top again. But of course, the rest of the mouse actually looks good on green. So I guess if you want a green mouse, it's good. But you kind of just have to play around with the LEDs until you find one that actually looks decent, which is not very many in my opinion, which is kind of unfortunate. So anyway, this has been my review of the Zelotes C12 Custom Gaming Mouse. If you guys are interested in purchasing this product, of course you can do so with a link in the description. The giveaway will be released either tonight or tomorrow, depending on when this video is uploaded. So you can go ahead and enter to win this mouse if you are interested in doing so. The mouse I'm giving away is brand new and unused and all of that, so yeah, you can go ahead and enter the giveaway. There will be a lot more information on that in the actual giveaway video. But yeah, anyway, this has been Jordan for Joke Reviews. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next review.